Here with reaction, author of Trump and the American Future, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. You know, didn't we go through this whole impeachment thing about Ukraine and ignore quid pro quo Joe leveraging a billion so zero experience hunters prosecutor would get fired? They ignored that. They ignored Hillary's dossier. But now we've got real whistleblowers. How serious do you think the courts will take people that are willing to sign affidavits under the threat of perjury of what laws were violated? Oh, look, I think they'll take them very seriously because in some cases, when you get into a city like Philadelphia or Pittsburgh or Detroit, uh, this person could be risking their life. I mean, it, it's not a small thing to be a whistleblower when you're around a machine. And these are machines. These are very tough, ruthless groups who are quite prepared to hurt your children, to hurt you. I've, I've already encountered one person uh, who is willing, reluctantly, to come out and give an affidavit, but literally said he worries about his children, he's convinced it'll destroy his business, uh, and that the people we're talking about are very ruthless. So uh, I, I do think you're seeing a remarkable period here because more and more people are coming forth, and presently it'll become a flood. I mean, there's a magic moment in these kind of investigations where all of a sudden enough different people are coming forward that they say, all right, I'm going to do it. It's the right thing to do. And I think a week from now, uh, we will have amazingly more evidence of just how corrupt the system had become. Is it, does it create, you know, there are those saying that even raising the question or listening to people, which I find astounding considering three years they rejected the legitimacy of the Trump presidency because they thought this mysterious Russia-Trump collusion elected Donald Trump and he stole the election. That's all we heard. Uh, uh, four investigations later, no evidence. Isn't it good for the country ultimately to listen to the whistleblowers? Well, weren't we told that on the whole Ukraine impeachment? Except this is not, these are not hearsay whistleblowers, real whistleblowers. Look, this, this goes to the heart of the American system. The Founding Fathers took very seriously a due process which starts with voting, goes to counting, then goes to recounting, then goes potentially to the court, then goes to the state legislature, then ultimately generates electors who then have to go to Congress. This is a very elaborate, deliberate process by people who knew a lot about power and who did not want exactly what the media tried to do the last four or five days, which is have a mob effect where we're all supposed to roll over, pretend that you know there's been a coronation and Biden has been crowned, which is just not true. Not a single state uh, has been certified. There are, I think, going to be lawsuits in six different states. Uh, I think this is clearly up in the air. But the important thing for the average American should be simple. We have to have a process of honest elections or our power as individuals it just doesn't matter. And so we're fighting not for Donald Trump. We're fighting for the very right of every American to expect that their elections will be honest. And that's how serious and how fundamental this is. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2, Constitution, each state appoint the, in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct electors, etc. Let me ask you this. If the Supreme Court of America decides, they, their decision should be on the law, and they decide the law was manufactured, say, in Pennsylvania by the governor with the extension, or that the law wasn't followed in a number of states because observers right. weren't able to observe. I think that's good for America to know. I just don't know what the remedy is. Well, we have had a case in Philadelphia a couple of years ago where a Democratic state senator was so corrupt in the election law that they actually replaced him with his Republican opponent, shifting the balance of power in the state Senate. And the judge just said, I have no choice. You're clearly a crook, and I'm not going to let you be in office. Wow. Powerful days ahead. Mr. Speaker, thank you.